China's rapid economic development has led to massive urbanization that has created challenges to policymakers as well as each and every individual living in big cities. And urbanization has been a hot topic during the two national political sessions. This week, my colleague He Jian talked to Dr. Dennis Taoyang, professor of business administration at the University of Virginia, who offered his idea on how some of those challenges can be resolved. This is definitely one of the hottest topic during the NPC and CPPCC. So, what do you, what what do you think of the challenge? What are the challenges for China's urbanization? A significant fraction of the population in Shanghai are rural migrants or migrants, roughly forty percent of the total population. But the uh, the working environments or the welfare provisions of these people are systematically different. Right? Can they happily live in Shanghai? Can they are there very high costs for them to survive? Uh, but what about the policymakers? Because when when the uh, when that happens, if the city is full of people coming from everywhere in the world, uh, the policymakers maybe they will face difficulties. What what are the policy for? Because there are not so many uh, people who live who are born and raised in the city. Uh, if the aspiration is to making Shanghai a truly international city, a world-level financial center, right? have the type of innovation that can be generated from the city. I think some of the leaders would be having ideas that are consistent with this line of thinking. So in that sense, the type of distribution of mobility we have described is probably uh, something that uh, they aspire to achieve. Every 1% increase in urbanization here in China creates millions of tons of garbage and also hundreds of millions of tons of sewage. So this is quite an astonishing number and it's really a pressure, huge pressure and burden for, for the city cleaners. Uh, so how, how do we address that? Continued healthy urbanization can also upgrade the technology. So these uh, treating of garbage would be some uh, very small things to deal with. Uh, I can give you an example. I think when I arrived in the U.S. in the um, 1980s, I do not recall old people were very conscious about recycling materials versus, uh, say, food waste. Uh, they are rather casual about uh, putting them together. But now, we're talking about 20 or 30 years later, the technology is more advanced because just recently, in the past th uh, three or four years, right, uh, in Virginia, they no longer require you to sort the garbage. You can dump it all into one can. I learned from cash resources, now there is a much better machine. Once the garbage is done, they can sort out all the garbage into different types. Okay. So from my casual observation of this is that for garbage dumped, about 40% of the regular type of waste are decomposable organic materials. When sorted out, they can process them into fertilizer. Roughly another 40% are things like paper, plastic, metal, glasses, they can sort out and then sort into recycler and reproductible materials. So maybe the 20% is the real waste that you have to confront. But this point means I think with the advancements of technology, with the deepening of urbanization process, those things will be taken care of. Those are minor issues. Minor but, issues. But, but resource allocation is, is the major issue. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the design of a system, how much you can rely on the incentives of, e of individuals, to what extent you can leverage the powerful market, uh, what are the say, capacity or sources can promote technological innovation, those are the true things that we should look for.